been pointed to as someone on the rise as a leader. Um, how is that being handled under these circumstances? And additionally, the role of Shaka Tony within the locker room right now, can you kind of describe that as well? Um, yes, you know, I definitely uh, think of myself as a leader, uh, one of, a leader of this team. But, you know, when I think about my team, I think about, you know, the the different guys who are leaders too. You know, it, it's not just myself. We have so many guys who, who are in leadership positions right now, and I think that's what makes this team uh, very mature um, and, and able to handle everything that's going on right now. Um, and you know, Shaka is another guy. Uh, he, you know, he's been he's been a leader. I think he's been a leader of this team since I stepped on campus two years ago. You know, for me, he's been a a, a guy I can go to and I can talk to. Um, and, you know, he's always pointing me in the in, in the right direction. You know, what it, it's going to be some tough love with Shaka, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, he's going to have the best best interest in heart because he really cares about you and cares about the uh, the team as a whole. So, you know, Shaka's, Shaka has been a leader of this team and he will continue to be uh, during the season. Next question is Rich Garcella, Reading Eagles. Hi, PJ. Thanks for your time today. No doubt. Um, your background in debate and oratory, I was just wondering a couple, couple questions. What did you think of CJ's speech Sunday at the rally and – do you have any thoughts on Coach Franklin's statement as well? CJ's speech was beautiful. I think everybody, uh, you know, really, really wanted to hear what he had to say. You know, when I when I saw it, because I'm not in town right now, uh, mm-hmm. but when I see the video was put out, I, I I clicked on the link as soon as I could get my hands on it. So, you know, CJ it, it, again, it goes back to the leadership on this team. CJ is one of the uh, one of the veterans in the locker room. You know, a guy who has been vocal and. And I think it just goes to show you that if guys in locker rooms across this country and, and, and Penn State football can start this conversation and lead this conversation, then I think change uh, change can happen everywhere because we have so many different diverse backgrounds and, and guys come from all over the place. And, you know, CJ just being a catalyst to start this conversation, you know, when it's not easy to do so, uh, just speaks speaks volumes to the leadership we have in this locker room. How about Coach Franklin's statement? What, re, what did you think of that? Coach, Coach Franklin, uh, same thing with Coach Franklin's statement. Coach Franklin's statement, you know, uh, you see a lot of uh, college coaches coming out with their statements, but, um, you know, Coach Franklin is an African-American man. And um, when, when you look at African-American coaches, you know, they do, they do, they're put in different situations than, than other coaches because uh, the color of their skin. So for him to come out, and make an impactful statement on a sensitive touch uh, subject just be volumes to, you know, people like myself, African-Americans in the locker room, because if he can do it, then we can all also do it. Thank you. Next up is Audrey Snyder with The Athletic. Go ahead, Audrey. There we go. I think I'm muted now. Uh, thank good. you for your time, PJ. Um, I'm just wondering, kind of going off of, Rich's question, um, has Coach Franklin, have you guys met as a team to discuss everything going on? Did the leadership council meet or anything like that? Oh, we've all we've all met, um, not just the leadership council. We've all met. We had an open discussion for everybody in the Penn State family, not just uh, players and coaches, but the staff as well. You know, we've all we all sat down uh, this past weekend and, and just opened the floor up to everybody uh, who wants to to say something about this and, and get everything off their chest. And I think it was, it was really beneficial for us because we were able to take a step back and listen to everyone. And again, it's, it's important that we do it here because if we can't do it in our locker room, then it won't happen anywhere else. So we definitely did have a discussion and, um, you know, I think discussion during this time is very important moving forward. Next up is Jerry DePaula, Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Hi, PJ. Thank you very much for your time. I, I was just wondering, um, I noticed your family has a lot of ties with a couple other Power 5 schools. What uh, attracted you to Penn State, and why didn't you go to Notre Dame or West Virginia? <laughs> uh, you know, West Virginia and Notre Dame are two great schools. Um, you know, I definitely spent a, a lot of time around both those programs, given that you know, I do have family ties. Uh, but Penn State was just the right choice for me. You know, I'm not – I'm not my mom and dad. I'm not my brother. I'm a, I'm a different person, and, and they understand that. And, you know, that's that's just what it is. So, um, you 
know, when I'm looking at a school, it's going to be different from when they're looking at a school. So, uh, you know, I just – Penn State as a whole, um, when you think of Penn State, the first thing that comes to my mind always in it is what I tell people is that, you know, it's been a family from day one. Ever since I've been recruiting – been recruited the coaches have remained the same you know they haven't treated me or my teammates any different from when they were recruiting us to the time we stepped on campus so you know that's important to me and I have a support system not only at home but when I stepped on campus so uh that's that's the reason I chose Penn State um and I'm, I'm not saying that any of those other schools are bad but uh you know that's Penn State was Penn State was home for me Mark Brennan lines 247 Hey, PJ, excuse me. When people think about coaches, they think X's and O's and recruiting and game mm-hmm. stuff. Um, but, you know, Coach Franklin obviously is dealing with a whole a, a bunch of different stuff now with respect to the pandemic, Maude Arbery, George Floyd, the protest. How is he doing from a leadership perspective there? And how is he communicating with you guys and, and maybe even your parents? Uh, like I said, he's opened the floor up to us. Um, he's he's taking a step back because you know when you think of coaches you think uh, you know, leaders who who have the who have the voice who have the attention of everybody in the room and who, who are the ones that are always speaking. But Coach Frank and what he's done and and that's been important for us is he's taking a step back and he's allowed us to speak our minds. You know he's like I said he we we had a discussion this past weekend um, where he allowed anyone to speak if they wanted to. Um, you know, he's reaching out to guys. We're having these uh, conversations. And I think that's what's so important about Coach Franklin is that, you know, he's going to love us, uh, whether it be the tough love he gives us on the field or whether it's, uh, you know, putting an arm around us when things are difficult off the field. You know, he's always going to be there for us. And, and it's been the same since, you know, he's been recruiting us. So Coach Franklin's never changed. Um, you know, he loves and cares for each one of us. So, uh, you know, we appreciate it for him for that. Next up is Donnie Collins, Times Tribune. Hey, PJ, you guys have obviously a a spotlight on you guys, and, and, and especially at times like this. Um, how, how how much work do you guys have to put into finding the right words to kind of express your thoughts and, and feelings, whether it's CJ's speech or, or James' statement, and and and, and how, how important it is it to kind of set that right tone? It's it's very important because when you're a African American uh, football player at Penn State, um, you you represent so much. You represent your your family's name. You represent the university. You represent the guys in the locker room. But you also represent uh, young African American kids who aspire to be in our positions uh, down the road. So twenty years down the road, I don't I don't want kids to feel like they don't have a voice. I don't want them to feel like they can't say. Uh, what they want to say, um, you know, we, we do have to walk a, a tight rope of, of what we say, but at the end of the day, you know, we are able to voice our opinions and we, and, and we can do so. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, what's important for me when, when going through all this, I, I want to be a representative of, of what to do for kids who, who want to be in my position. And I wanted to, I want to do it the correct way. Next up is Nubias Wilborn, Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Hey, what up, brother? How you doing, man? Thanks for doing this. No doubt, man. Respect, fam. Um, from this week, it obviously has been a tough week, but had there been a moment or two where you've been able to find some joy, some hope? If so, what's that kind of been like? It has been a tough week. It, 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 it's been a it's been a long week. You know, we have so much going on in this country right now. You turn on the TV. You Go on Twitter, you know it's it's all over the place, and rightfully so. You know people are people are tired of, of you know the, the the multitude of injustices that are going on, and uh, you know I think it's start it's 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 showing. And uh, you know I have, I have a lot of respect uh, and love for everybody who's out there, um, you know, doing what they can to really change the culture of the, this country. So you know it it, it is everywhere. Um, just taking a step back. You know, not not being on social media, turning off the TV, you know, maybe going to get a workout and just to get my mind off things because it is everywhere. And I'm able to, you know, I'm able to have a conversation with my family as well. So, you know, I'm, it is difficult, but, you know, I'm, I'm doing things to keep my mind busy working out, talking with my family. But, you know, like I said, uh, you know, I'm not going to shy away from what's going on because uh, we have to face it if we want to change it. John Sauber, Center Daily Times. Hey, PJ, thanks for the time. 
I want to go back to last week when Aeneas had the, that incident happen to him in, in Cincinnati. What was yeah. your reaction when you found out about it? And what was your message to him to sort of you know, let him know you were there for him? Uh, when, I first, when I first saw his tweets, you know, I just wanted to make sure he was all right. He was safe. Um, you know, I think that's what a lot of guys around the team did when we first uh, heard of the news. You know, we, we reached out to him, made sure that he was, uh, you know, in the, in the correct mind space. Because when that does happen, it takes a toll. On, on anybody, no matter who you are. So, you know, we all we all comforted him. You know, we allowed him to speak on what happened. Um, you know, we made sure he was okay. And then, you know, what, what was your second part of the question, sir? What was sort of, sort of your message to him and letting him know that you were there for him and, and how did you sort of back him up there? Oh, just, yeah, like I said, just 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 talking to him. You know, whatever he needs uh, from us, um, you know, guys going on Twitter, uh, supporting him and, and just letting them know that we're here. We're going to always have his back uh, no matter what, you know, that's what a family does, you know, no matter what, what happens to you, we're all, we're always going to have his back and love him. So, you know, I think we made that message very clear um, to him uh, through social media. And I think we're, people were allowed, uh, were able to see that support um, that we, we gave him. So, you know, he's, he moved forward from it. You know, he, that's just, that's just what happens in America. Um, and, and it's a sad part, but I think he handled the situation very well, and he's going to continue to move forward. You know, he's he's out there, um, you know, to facing facing the problems that we're we're going through right now. So he, just having that incident, I think it, it really opens up a lot of people's minds that it can happen to everyone, no matter if you're a Penn State football player. It, it, it happens to everyone. So I think us seeing that, him seeing that, it really opens our eyes and allows us to grow and allows us to talk about. It. Next up is Frank Bodani, New York Daily Record. Hi, PJ. Uh, thanks for your time today. Good to talk to you. And mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned Shaka at the beginning of this call and his mm -hmm. leadership since you've been there. Can you talk just a little bit more about how he is unique as a leader, how exactly he gets his message to guys, what, what the impact is, and how that's yeah. helped you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Shaka's, uh, Shaka's from a, a rough place in Philly. Um, you know, I think a lot of us know that, um, you know, his, uh, his upbringing was, was different from mine. You know, I'm, I'm from, I'm from a, a suburb of Baltimore. So, you know, I didn't have to grow up facing the challenges that, uh, he did, but I think that's who, uh, I think that's what kind of made him, um, and, you know, Shaka, I, I got, I got so much love for Shaka. I'll give you a story. Uh, it was last summer and, uh, you know, doing, doing pull-ups for bigger guys is difficult. So, you know, they, they, they bring out the bands for us to, to do pull-ups. And um, I was I was going to do my pull up and Shaka walks over and says, "No, you don't need you don't need the band. You can you can do that pull up." And I like and at first I'm like, "Nah, bro, I I've, I've never I've never done a pull up." And uh, and he's like, "Nah, you, you, well I'm not gonna allow you to do to do the to do the pull up with the band right now." So he he takes the band off, and I'm like, well, "All right, I gotta do my pull ups." So there's no band. I get on I get on the bar and I do eight pull ups. So that just goes to show you that. That Shaka is he cares so much about who you are and wants to develop develop you and um, you know he, he does have tough love you know he's not always gonna uh, tell you what you want to hear he's gonna tell you what you need to hear in order to improve and I think that story just resembles the type of guy he, he is. Peter Turkstra, WTAJ. Hey, PJ, um, sports can bring a variety of different people together, whether it's different races, different backgrounds, different upbringings. Um, how important has sports been in your life in experiencing other people's stories, and how has that shaped your worldview? Uh, sports has a huge impact on my life. Um, you know, the, the, the impact on my life, you, you just can't, you can't measure it. I've, I've been able to meet so many different people so many different from so many different places so many different races and and just you know when you when you bring a group of guys together uh no matter if it's basketball football soccer whatever it may be you're able to you're able to see uh what you're what you're not used to you know um like i said i'm from a suburb in baltimore but when when i'm in the team environment i get to see what guys are like from philly what guys are like from wisconsin what guys are like from atlanta you know, I get to see the many different things and it just brings you so much closer and makes you realize that, you know, who you are 
and, and, and what you represent. So many guys have that same uh, that same mindset and, and where we all come from. But you know, that's that's just what makes sports so so great and so impactful. When you bring so many group of guys together, you're able to learn so much, and uh, I think that really shapes who you are uh, as a man and throughout the years. Next up is Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, hello, PJ. Thanks for the time. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the meeting uh, last weekend. Uh, what was your message to the team about what you see, what's been going on, and what was the most compelling message you heard from a teammate? I, you know what, I can't, I can't give you, I can't give you just one. You know, I, I as much as I do. Um, want to give you one statement that was said that was impactful. It, was, it, it, it wasn't just one. It was the many different ones that, that you heard. And it, and it wasn't just, like I said, there was, there were many people in that meeting. It wasn't just the football players and coaches and our staff. So it included, um, you know, Caucasian women, African-American men, white men. It, it included so many different people. And just that the floor was so open for everybody discussing. People were so comfortable, but people were also able to voice, you know, what they felt. Um, it, it, it was just a beautiful thing to see because you know, you know, we're always we're always so worried about football. Um, we're always so worried about what's going on in our life, but you know, we take a step back and we really see what's going on around us and how we can change everything. I think that's that was the main message uh, of what was going on that you know we can make a difference. And uh, and I think when when people say they can't, I think that's I, th I think it's not true. I think we we can make a difference if we're able to have these discussions, if we're able to, to implement plans and go out in the community and, and make change, then then that's what's really going to help us moving forward as not only as a program, but as a country. And I, and I think that discussion was just so vital in, uh, in that first step of doing so. So I don't, I don't think it was just one uh, statement that was said. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next up is John Petisnock, happyvalley.com. Hey, PJ, appreciate your time and hope you're doing well. Mm -hmm. hey, so no, thanks, PJ. Hey, earlier you called Penn State home. I wanted to ask, outside of football, what do you enjoy the most about being a student athlete at Penn State? Uh, I would say the love and support from, from everybody. Um, when, when you think of football players, you know, everybody has their perception of us and what they think. And, it, and truth be told, it's not always going to be positive. But when I'm on Penn State's campus, and, and just the amount of not only the respect, but, but the love that the community, the teachers, uh, the staff members, everybody just has for us. And they really care about us. I, I think that's that's my favorite part about it, because when you go to different places, you know, maybe the teacher doesn't really like football players or, or maybe the community members and the students are just, you know, just shut them out. But here at Penn State, they don't do that. And, I, and I've never had a situation I, I don't think my teammates have either um and, and that's just what i really enjoy because you can go out um you can go downtown you can be in the classroom and, and teachers are going to show you the the love and care uh and respect that not only the coaches give but but everybody gives to us so i think that's what i really enjoy about that state next stop is nate bauer blue white illustrated hey pj with um with everything that's that's going on uh at this point how, how much would you value being back in the physical presence of your teammates um, in, in State College, and and how eager are you for that opportunity uh, whenever it does come? I'm so I'm so eager. Uh, you know, the the day they do announce, whenever we can go back, I might run back. I might not even drop back. That's just how happy I am to be back with my guys. And I think and I think it would it, it would be nice to be with them during this hard time because you know everybody is experiencing it. You know everybody's seeing the uh, everybody's seeing what's going on in the country, and it's 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 truly really not a good time right now for us. But we are gonna you know things are gonna change. Um, but to be with my teammates right now would be important because you know you want to feel that 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 positive energy. You want to feel that that love and that connection we have as brothers. Uh, just to be in that you know. Being together would, would be very important for us because I think, you know, as individually, you know, some guys might feel that, you know, they're not safe. Uh, they're not in a, in a good place. And if they were with us, you know, we would be able to comfort them. So 
Uh, we're not together right now, unfortunately, but when we do get together, we're going to continue having conversations. We're going to continue loving one another. And, and when that day does arrive, you know, we're going to continue with this to, to get this thing rolling. So. Got time for three more questions. Ben Jones, statecollege.com. PJ, it, it seems like every year something like this happens and it becomes acceptable for athletes to talk about stuff outside of sports. And then after a while, people go back to expecting you to just talk about sports. Do you yeah. change? Do you feel like there's an opportunity here to maybe make these sorts of conversations more of a year round thing rather than, you know, only when something bad happens? Yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the things I was talking to my family about is I don't want this to just be a, a one week or a one month thing. I want this thing to be all year round. I want us to be talking about, I want us to be, you know, doing stuff in the community. What can we do to change things? I want us to never, never forget this feeling that we have right now because it's, it's so important. Um, when, when you have tough times, tough times bring change. Easy times don't really bring change. So I think it's important. Um, you know, it, it's, it sucks that we have to go through this, but it's important that we remember this feeling we're having and we, we continue to move forward as a country and, um, you know, just, just put ourselves in the best position to, to be a country where, where unity is, is key. Next up is Mike Gross, Lancaster Newspapers. Hi, PJ. Good afternoon. Um, yeah. When uh, do you have any sense of, you said you're not in State College, do you have any sense of, are any of your teammates in State College? Do you have any sense of when you're going to be getting back? Because uh, at least in theory now you, uh, some schools are starting to get back to voluntary workouts and stuff. Do you have any sense of right. what's going on right. for you guys? Uh, we've definitely had a uh, conversation um, with scenarios of going back. Uh, nothing has been put in place. No dates have been given to us. Uh, nothing is, is, is set in stone right now for us. Um, you know, we're, our guess is only as good as y'all's. So, you know, nothing, nothing is set in place for us. Um, you know, so, so we're, we're right now, we're just waiting to see, uh, like I said, I'm at home, I'm, I'm training, I'm working out. And when the day does come, uh, you know, we'll, we'll all fly back to, to, to campus. Our last question goes to Evan Patrick, Daily Collegiate. Hey, PJ, thank you for your time. Um, I want to ask you about one of the new graduate assistants, um, Dion Barnes. I know there's been a lot of turnover since the end of last season, but uh, how much communication have you had with him? How much have you been able to work with him? And what does he add to the coaching group on defense? Uh, definitely. You know, we got to take Dion came, uh, I believe, in at the beginning of the spring semester. So we got to work with him throughout winter workouts. Um, it, was, it was a brief period, but we got to work with him a little bit. Uh, you know, he's definitely he's definitely been a huge part moving forward for uh, at, for us as a coach because, you know, he's not too far from removed from his uh, his playing days as well. So, um, you know, he's a younger guy. He's a guy we can go to and talk to uh, about football, about life, or about whatever. So, you know, he means a lot to us. Um, you know, I, th I definitely think he's going to help us out as a D-line. I uh, believe he was a former high school coach. So, you know, he, he does have a coach and background, and I know he wants the best for us um, just – just having conversation with them thus far. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited for, uh, uh, for Dion. All right. Thank you for joining us, PJ and everybody. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you guys.